What is up, captains and cadets? So, so much talk and excitement about Web3 and the upcoming developments and the rollout of the metaverse, the, the true reality, the actual reality of what the metaverse is really going to look like to this day still remains undefined. So in this episode, I would love to discuss what I hope Star Atlas might look like one day after all the gaming developments have reached their ultimate goals. Where might Star Atlas go after that? This is going to be a really fun discussion. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Let's get into it. Let's go. What is up muds, what's up onies, and what is up oosters? I want to start this video out just by reminiscing about my childhood. I'm from Generation X, I'm a Gen Xer, a small generation sandwiched in between the boomers and the millennials, and ever since I was young, I've always been obsessed with crossovers. I mean, when I was a kid, it was the coolest thing in the world to see Batman suddenly appear on Scooby-Doo, and then shortly after, the Jetsons all of a sudden appeared on the Flintstones. It was killer, man. I absolutely loved it. 90s sitcoms then started to do all the crossovers, plus Family Guy and Bob's Burgers and Rick and Morty. And you can't forget about the Simpsons. There's so many crossovers on the Simpsons and the cartoons on the Fox network. Every time you see one, man, it would just draw an audience. He's robbing us, I feel sorry for him. No, don't say that. We're fun to rob. Maybe he's just looking for the bathroom. You're overthinking it, bro. Just go anywhere. I'll clean it up. <laughs> oh my God, Morty, what did you do? You killed oh the Simpsons, God. Morty. No, no. Oh, go, 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 video games older than Disney Infinity, but Disney Infinity, at least from my view, was one of the first video games to actually really put out a crazy sandbox where you can actually just create your own world within a whole bunch of different variety of genres. So for instance, in Disney Infinity, you can be basically a Disney princess and you'll be in the same world as all the Pixar stars, the Marvel Avengers, and the coolest of all, Star Wars. I know that when my son was young, we had a blast playing Disney Infinity, and that led us to actually start collecting LEGO Dimensions. Both Disney Infinity and LEGO Dimensions gave you an actual physical toy that you could play with, and then you would put it on an electric pad and those toys would come to life. In LEGO Dimensions, they had crossovers between Goonies, The Simpsons, Back to the Future, Gremlins, Harry Potter, Portal, Wizard of Oz, DC Comics, Lord of the Rings, Teen Titans, it just, the list goes on. I'm gonna keep going. Doctor Who, Jurassic World, Ghostbusters, Adventure Time, Scooby-Doo, Powerpuff Girls, A-Team, going back to the 80s, A-Team and Knight Rider, Beetlejuice, E.T., and Mission Impossible. We started also seeing different types of metaverses kind of come in through the movies, you know? Like movies like Wreck-It Ralph where they brought 80s and 90s villains right into the same room. And virtual reality entertainment, otherwise known as VR headsets, have also made their way onto television and into the movies. And let's not forget about Marvel Comics and the DC Universe both launching their own versions of the multiverse. But there is one particular piece of fiction that might have really kickstarted the whole entire metaverse idea, at least into the mainstream concept that we now view. 2011, a fantastic science fiction novel hit the scene called Ready Player One. It's a novel written by Ernest Cline, an American author, and it was about a dystopian society that takes place in 2045 where a young man named Wade Watts is on a search for an Easter egg in a virtual reality game, or I should say, a virtual reality metaverse, where all video games are connected as one. Now this novel was then put to screen, put to film, by famous and amazing director Steven Spielberg in 2018. The movie had mediocre success, but still actually put the vision to the average person of what the metaverse could possibly be. A lot of people have never even heard of the metaverse until they actually explored that movie. Now, if video games are gonna turn our whole entire identity into a metaverse, what video games are working on it at the moment? Now, there are two different games that I'm gonna cover here, on-chain and off-chain games. The on-chain game that we talk about on this channel is Star Atlas, 
one striving to develop a metaverse. But we'll start off with off-chain games, ga games that are more your traditional style game, console games and computer games. One of the newer games that might be considered a metaverse game is one done by Warner Brothers called DC Metaverses, where they cross over Looney Tunes and Rick and Morty, the Iron Giant, Steven Universe, Tom and Jerry, Game of Thrones, Scooby-Doo, amongst others. It's a player versus player combat game. They plan to grow further and bring more and more different types of characters and genres within that game. In my personal opinion, I think that the latest release of Fortnite's Chapter 5 might be the closest thing that we've ever seen to a real off-chain metaverse. They have implemented multiple different worlds and multiple different style games within their own realm called Fortnite where you can actually take the characters that you've grown to love, the skins that you've collected, and play those exact same characters and skins within totally different genre games. One of the games that they've created is a Lego game, all free to play by the way. The Lego game, you could bring in your Fortnite skins, wear them as a Lego character, and you play a crafting game that is kind of a mashup between the traditional Lego games and something that Minecraft might have developed. They also came out with a racing game that is a crossover with Rocket League. The racing game actually is a fast and furious style game. You could use all sorts of boosts and special abilities to race your car down the track. You could still use your Fortnite character to drive the car and you can actually start collecting different skins that will actually give your car a different look. third world that they just rolled out, a brand new world, it's called Fortnite Festival, and it promises to deliver a whole bunch of musical acts, musical stars, bands, artists that will then collaborate with Fortnite. It will bring publicity to the artists, so I see a draw from the artists angle, and the game has a similar feel such as Guitar Hero or Rock Band or a bunch of the mobile apps that utilize music where you use your thumbs to tap on the screen to match the rhythm of the music. So now we have the traditional Fortnite Battle Royale style game. We have a Lego version of their game. We have a racing version of their game. We have a Guitar Hero version of their game. And last but not least, we cannot forget about Fortnite's creative mode. Fortnite's creative mode lets users actually utilize the Unreal 5 version of the game. They can create any sandbox style game that they'd like. It's very reminiscent of what Roblox is going after. But with the tools of Unreal Engine 5, your imagination has no limits. You can make the game as realistic or non-realistic as you possibly want. Epic Games has also given the creators a chance to actually earn revenue by creating these games if the games are utilized by players in the whole entire Fortnite ecosystem. The whole thing is absolutely wild and has happened right underneath our noses. And barely anyone has really noticed or written very many articles about what Fortnite has actually accomplished so far. Alright, so now that we had some discussion about off-chain video games, let's talk about an on-chain video game. And specifically, I'd love to talk about Star Atlas because that's what this channel is focused upon. So what do I mean by off-chain and on-chain? Well, Star Atlas is built on a blockchain, which is an open sourced public ledger that can be seen by all. All movements are recorded on this cryptocurrency called Solana. Everything that you do is recorded on this blockchain, whether it's crafting or mining or moving a ship or scanning. Everything is on the blockchain, including the assets themselves. All the assets have true ownership by the owner of those assets. They can be traded at any time on an open marketplace. Star Atlas has its own economy. The value of your assets might go up, they might go down. If you love the asset, you can keep the asset. If you dislike the asset or you feel like Star Atlas isn't for you, you could sell those assets for real 
life money. It is a remarkable new way to look at video games and many people are super excited. Some people call it Web3, some people call it play to earn. I call it just plain awesome. Just to cover a few things that Star Atlas is in the middle of building right now. They are building a Unreal Engine 5 version of their game. You're gonna be able to fly from planet to planet. You're gonna be able to own habitats, own land. You're gonna be able to mine and craft on these different planets. You're gonna be able to explore a whole bunch of different worlds. You're gonna come across NPCs and different alien races. At the moment, they have something called the showroom where you can test flight your ships in the Unreal Engine 5 version of the game. This is available on the Epic Games Store the same people that put out Fortnite. There's a first person shooter game within the game. There is a dog fight mode. There is racing. It has super high end graphics, awesome sound, realistic looking skins on the ships. It is truly a good time. The second game that they are in the middle of developing is something called Sage. Right now they have a mining and crafting version of Sage called Sage 3D. You can see your ships on a map. You can go out and mine for different types of resources. With those resources, you can then craft different types of components. And with those components that you craft, you can throw them on the marketplace and sell them for real world value in the Star Atlas economy. Or you can actually craft different types of ships or habitats or whatever Star Atlas is offering at the moment. The third game that Star Atlas is developing is a fitness app. And this fitness app is for the crew members of each one of your ships. You will be able to level up your crew members by working out in real life, by exercising. As you level up your crew members, it will reflect how well the crew members work within the game. It'll give maybe your ships or your crafting or your flight controls a little extra perk. Whatever happens on the fitness app will reflect what happens inside the Unreal Engine 5 version of the game. Whatever happens in the Unreal Engine 5 version of the game will reflect what happens in Sage. Whatever happens in Sage will reflect what happens in the other two games. So everything is recorded on the blockchain and what's exciting is every single time something has changed in one game it reflects in all the others no matter how many games star atlas builds this is the way it's going to be this is how star atlas is building their own version of the metaverse now since star atlas is essentially a crowd-funded game the dev team has decided to release small increments of the game at a time but where will Star Atlas eventually go? Well, what we are striving for is a fully immersive game in Unreal Engine 5, where you will be able to fly from planet to planet. You will be able to explore these planets. You will be able to drop something called claim stakes down upon these planets, where you will be able to mine for certain resources that you will be able to craft within the game. Very similar to what is going on within Sage Labs, but we will see this happening in the Unreal Engine realistic version of the game. There will also be certain gaming loops that we will find upon each planet. We will be able to explore and we will discover certain NPCs and creatures and alien life forms. We will be able to go on bounty hunts. We will be able to encounter NPC pirates. It's going to be phenomenal when the game is fully released. I cannot wait. Now, this isn't exactly what I wanted to discuss in this video. I wanted to discuss where Star Atlas might go once the game is complete and the developers of Star Atlas are happy of where it might be. Where might they want to take Star Atlas from there? This is what I am so excited about because I imagine Star Atlas taking their economy a lot farther than just the assets that Star Atlas owns themselves. The CEO of Star Atlas mentioned, what if there is a Neo Tokyo planet? Now what Neo Tokyo is, is a meeting of the minds, a think tank, if you will, of different developers, a club of sorts of some of the highest end minds in Web3. Their ultimate goal is to take Web3 into the reality of Player Ready 1 that we have already discussed in this video a little bit earlier. Now, if there is a planet that represents Neo Tokyo code, what other planets might be available out there? What if there is a commerce planet, like an entire planet that you can land on and you can actually start shopping in? And it'll be pretty awesome if you can land at that planet and start shopping at all the Star Atlas orientated DAX that are out there, all the different types of Star Atlas merchandise that's gonna be offered. 
But what if we take it even further? What if there is going to be a possible Nike store on that planet? Or what if there is going to be a sports memorabilia store on that planet? What if there is going to be a clothing store or an Ikea on that planet? What if there is an entire planet that represents Amazon.com? You can just walk around the planet and the planet will be separated in different types of departments such as clothing or technology or food. Whatever you buy, you might be able to see in virtual reality and you'll be able to order it and have it sent right to your house. Let's expand a little bit further. Now we mentioned Lego a couple different times in this video. Lego seems to really enjoy being part of different types of metaverses. What if there is a Lego planet within Star Atlas? It would draw in different types of children. Adults love playing those Lego games. Maybe you see all your assets in their Lego form. What if there is other gaming platforms? There could be a Grand Theft Auto world. There could be a Fortnite world. We mentioned Fortnite. There could be a Call of Duty. There could be an EVE Online world. Let's take it even a little deeper. What if there is a world that represents film. You can have some indie Sundance festivals on that planet. You can watch your favorite movies on that planet. You can watch different genres of movies on different areas of that planet. Like maybe you land on the planet and you travel over to the sci-fi country in that planet or you go to the romance section of that planet. What if there is a theater section where you can watch live broadcasts of different types of plays or opera? This brings me to a music-based planet. What if there's a planet that represents all different types of genres of music and the same thing you can go from continent to continent you can see your favorite hip-hop group your favorite pop group your favorite reggae group your favorite country group let's talk sports what if there's a planet that represents all the sports or let's break it up to different planets represent different sports there's one that's american football there's another that may be fifa there could be another one that represents the nba the national basketball association here in america maybe star atlas might not want to go this broad maybe they might want to keep it within web 3 and might have different games that are just Web3 orientated, like Big Time, Axie Infinity. Now, some people think that the Bored Ape metaverse called the Otherverse might be the true metaverse in the future. What if the Otherverse is just a planet in Star Atlas or vice versa? What if Star Atlas is a small section of the Otherverse? Or let's think about this in a different way. What if there is a warp gate between the two metaverses where you can warp from the Otherverse into the world of Star Atlas? Large corporations might want to get involved too, like what if Disney wants to own their own planet? They can represent all the different worlds that they own, so you can land at that planet and explore the different types of Disney movies, Pixar movies, Indiana Jones, Marvel Comics, and Star Wars for instance and or Disney might really want to own a planet for each one of those or maybe they have one central planet with a whole bunch of different moons that fly around that planet that represent each one of their companies that they own. There could be themed worlds like there could be a Harry Potter themed world. What if the government really wants to reach a younger generation or what if a government just wants to reach people in general they want to own a planet now one thing i do want to mention is if you are new to star atlas they are working with another company called metagravity metagravity is striving to have a server that can have 30,000 people playing star atlas at the exact same time so while you are landing on all these planets, it will not feel like a lonely place. There is gonna be countless other people also experiencing the same thing as you. It's gonna be absolutely remarkable. And this is just 30,000 people to begin with. It could be hundreds of thousands of people for all we know as the technology advances. And for the very last part of this video, I thought we could explore something together. If you go over to Twitter X and you go to the CEO of Star Atlas's page, his name is Michael Wagner. If you go down to the pinned post that he has had there since September 4th, 2021, it brings you to a YouTube video. This video is a three minute video. It's from futurist and philosopher Jason Silva, and it has his words that touch a little bit on where Star Atlas is and how the economy can affect the world. Every single time I watch it, I get goosebumps. I hope you do too. Let's watch it together. Verse, folks, is going to change the world. The metaverse is going to create a kind of speciation. The metaverse will be an incarnation of what John Smart calls the transcension hypothesis. The metaverse is the future of the human race. You see, there's been this simultaneous expansion that characterizes human history. We've been expanding outwards, you know, conquering more land, exploring more territory, 
right? More Earth and then the moon and then into space. But there's been this other expansion, this inner expansion that's been going straight into digital universes, right? Denser and denser computational substrates until eventually we might open up femtoscale densities of computation where metaverses can be moved into. We can download or upload our minds into the machine. We'll become like ghosts in the machine. And perhaps the greatest intersection of these spaces of outward expansion and inward expansion is embodied by Star Atlas. Star Atlas is a new metaverse, a metaverse that invites you to explore space through digital means, right? It's going to open up the final frontier, the intergalactic frontier powered by inner expansion through ones and zeros, a digital metaverse to free our minds beyond the pale blue dot. This is how we get off this rock. And Star Atlas, again, is an, is an ontological, ontological awakening. awakening, in the words of Ross Anderson, a forceful reckoning with what is and what might be. It's going to allow us to stargate beyond the bounds of the imagination, to literally become starlight. This metaverse will augment our minds and augment our world and finally allow us to show ourselves to ourselves. First, Carl Sagan said, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself, but so far we've had no means to explore that cosmos. But finally, through the metaverse, through Star Atlas, this becomes real. We get to go. Right? Because as they say, you've got to go there to know there. Well, with Star Atlas, you get to go there so you may know there. So everyone around the world, powered by decentralized blockchain technologies, will be able to literally craft an identity in which they expand beyond their horizons inside the Star Atlas universe. And that will have bleed through effects into the meat space. If you become successful in Star Atlas, thanks to the power of blockchain, you'll have monetary finances in the real world that will in turn be thrown back into Star Atlas and further expands its universe. So that's where we're heading. Welcome to the metaverse. Welcome to Star Atlas. In the words of D.H. Lawrence, may we free the brave, reckless gods within us all. I'm Jason Silva, and I support this message. <laughs>Last words I want to leave you is that we have been talking about Star Atlas building this giant world within their metaverse, lots of commerce, a whole entire economy. Now, imagine if some of those stores, we, we mentioned, you know, Nike and Amazon.com and things like that. Imagine at first that you can actually buy through those stores using just whatever your country's currency is. But then one day, Star Atlas decides to flip a switch, and the only currency that you can use within the Star Atlas universe is the Atlas token. That would be insane with that said guys thank you guys so much i love you all please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video but more importantly please subscribe if you're not subscribed already there is a link to my star path link down below if you hit that link it brings you to the star atlas marketplace and you save 10 percent on any ship primary sales ships i should say in the star atlas marketplace and it also helps out my channel i will talk to you guys later i have more of these videos coming out in the future bye